Well, Deb Murphy filed this story with the Owens Valley Committee conditions on the table. It's now up to the other five memorandum of understanding partners to pick up the discussion that just may result in the Lower Owens River Project Phase 2. Now, the Owens Valley Committee Board of Directors, as we had the story last week, issued its press release listing nine conditions. If those conditions can be agreed upon by the other five MOU partners, the organization could consider the recommended changes in the base flow and pump back station capacity both mandated in the 1997 MOU. And that's a big step for a group that, as stated in the release, has worked for more than 30 years to, quote, protect our valley, end quote. Now, the organization's primary concern is the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power using the Owens River as a conduit to export more water to Los Angeles. Now, some of the conditions are already under consideration, not requiring any change to the existing MOU. Said Inyo County Water Department Director Bob Harrington, there are things on that list that we'd like to do whether the partners can reach an agreement or not, end quote. Now, one of those conditions is to actively pursue a feasibility study on unplugging the clogs in the island areas of the Owens north of Lone Pine and due east of the Alabama gates. Now that area has developed a broad Thule marsh, Harrington said. The Thule's are collecting sediment in a low gradient area of the river and basically growing an expanding series of soggy islands. Now the fix is either simple or complex and expensive depending on the fixer's point of view. The real solution as suggested in the Owen Va Owens Valley Committee's conditions is to seek grant funding for a feasibility study. Now in addition, the OVC wants to see an improvement at the Alabama Gates outlet below the islands. There's been a sediment buildup there, he explained Harrington, as well as issues with the ditch that leads from the gates to the river. Now, while there have been habitat improvements along the 62-mile stretch of rewatered Owens, water quality, lack of vertical tree growth, and the Thule invasion are not in, are not in alignment with the project goals. The MOU consultants ecosystem sciences have recommended for several years that those issues could improve with a more natural flow and seasonal flushing flows. LADWP has been in agreement with those recommendations as long as the finished product is water neutral and the water is available for the flushing, the flushing flows. Now, one of the OVC's conditions is specific language define the availability of water. Now, one example would be available storage at Tinamaha. As of last week, LADWP Aqueduct Manager Jim Yanata and staff were working on hydrographs that would meet the recommended flows with the same amount of water laid out in the MOU stipulation and order. We want the best use of that water, Yanata said in a tele telephone interview, pointing out water that exceeds the current pump back restriction flows into the delta south of the pump back station. Now the consultants agreed the excess flow is not enhancing a natural habitat, just creating another mass of toolies. Yanata said the department could not agree to give up more water to the project than is indicated in the MOU. We can improve conditions on the river by increasing the habitat flows, he said. We thank Deb Murphy for that story. Well, last month, the Mammoth Community Water District Board unanimously approved moving from level one to level two shortage restrict water shortage restrictions. Now, a press release states the board's decision was based on the water content of the Mammoth Pass snowpack about 70 percent below normal and Mammoth Community Water District staff estimates of water supply availability. Now, the goal of the level two restrictions are to achieve a 20 percent reduction of customer water demand. Customers in the Mammoth Community Water District have been under level one restric restrictions since the drought began in 2012. Mammoth Community Water District Board will continue to reassess snowpack conditions and the status of the groundwater production wells water supply conditions through the coming months. Now level two water restrictions will be in effect starting March 9th. Under these restrictions, outdoor irrigation will only be allowed from 8 p.m. to 9 a.m. Water for construction is limited to recycled water. Significant leaks must be repaired within three days of notification or discovery, and no new lawns may be installed even when a hose with an automatic shutoff nozzle is used for irrigation. Indoor savings are expected to result from voluntary measures taken by customers. 
press release notes that Mammoth Community Water District does have incentive programs to help customers save water. Now these programs include an indoor and outdoor fixture rebate program, free efficient shower heads, and staff availability to discuss site specific irrigation efficiency improvements. Information on these programs available on the Mammoth Community Water District website. The district would also like to encourage all customers to pay attention to water usage, check for leaking fixtures indoors and out, keep pools and spas covered when not in use, limit shower times, and only run full loads of dishes and clothes. More information on the level two restrictions and tips to conserve water, again, available from that Mammoth Community Water District website, mcwd.dst.ca.us. Well, we'd like to say congratulations to Olivia Graw. She took first place at last year in Bishop Rotary Club's contest and again took place this year in the Mammoth and Bishop Rotary Club's annual speech contest. Olivia Graw will be seeking the top spot at the 2015 District 5190 conference that will be held at Harrah's South Lake Tahoe in May. Now the district awards will be $1,000 for first place, $750 for second and $500 for third. It is better to light a single candle than to sit and curse the darkness. Now, what this means to students was the theme for students entering the Rotary District Speech Contest. Seven students from Mammoth and Bishop High Schools competed in the Mammoth and Bishop Rotary Club's annual speech contest that was held at the Rotary Club of Bishops noon meeting on February 24th. Now, a press release notes that each year, talented students demonstrate their speaking skills in front of Rotarians, guests, and families. And the press release notes, it's an amazing thing to watch. Maggie Kingsbury from the Rotary Club of Bishop was the chair person for the Bishop students, Audrey Bear, Angie Flores, and Olivia Gras. Luan Mendel from the Mammoth Rotary Club was in charge of the speech contest for the four Mammoth students, Amanda Kirkaby, Lex Brody, Connor Kusamoto, and Garrett Hallam. And congratulations to all of those kids. And we'll actually be talking a little bit more about Amanda Kirkaby coming up uh, when in our next segment. We'll be right back. <laughs> 